الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have uh, made this opportunity for us to remind each other with the, the best of the Sahabiyat, the best of the companionesses, if you like, of the Messenger وسلم, and they are the mothers of the believers, the, the Ummahat al Mu'mineen, and no doubt they are those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed and raised many levels, and no doubt the Muslim. Mothers, sisters, daughters, wives, no doubt they take them as the uh, examples. For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah raised them. And they come under the general verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the, the virtues of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And Allah said, radiyallahu anhum wa radu anhum. And before that, He said, was sabiqoon al awwalun min al muhajirin wal ansar wal ladina taba'uhum bi ihsan. And those that follow them upon righteousness. Radiallahu anhum wa radu anh. Allah is pleased with them and them pleased with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt, He chose the Sahaba for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He chose them and from them are the Ummahat al Mu'mineen, the mothers of the believers. Allah chose them, no doubt. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Allah looked into the hearts of the people and He chose the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the best of the hearts of the people. And He chose him as His Messenger. And thereafter, He looked at the hearts of the people. And he chose the Sahaba to be the best of the hearts of the people. And they were the best of the hearts of the people and he made them as they, as his messenger, as his companions. So here we have the best of the people. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ حَدِيثٍ بُخَارِ خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ لَذِينَ يُلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَذِينَ يُلُونَهُمْ The best people is my generation. Then them to come after them. Then them to come after them. Hadith which is Mutawatir and in Bukhari. So therefore, we should study the life and biographies of the companions and how great they were and that they were the best people ever to be. And from them, as we've mentioned, the Sahabiyat. For the sisters to know as role models, who are their role models? For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised the women. Allah revealed the whole surah just on women showing them their rights. Surah Al-Nisa. Showing them that they have rights of inheritance. Showing them that they have rights naam, in marriage. Rights as a, as a wife, rights as a daughter, rights as a sister, rights as a mother, rights as an aunt. Rights after rights after rights for them. When in that time, in that period of Jahiliyyah, of the pagans, they used to bury the daughters alive. If they had a daughter, swaddat, swaddat wujuhuhum. You find that their, uh, their faces become blackened with sadness that they, have, that they had a daughter. And they would bury those daughters alive. That's Allah Salama. So Allah Azza wa Jal came to give the women liber came to give them true liberation. Liberation away from the darkness of this world, the prison of this world, to the vastness and the beauty of Al Islam. Based upon Quran and Sunnah Ala Fahm Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Yani he came to take them out of darkness to bring them into that which is light. And so we study the the mothers of the believers. We start with Khadija radiallahu anha. Khadija bint, bint Khwailid. She is the, the best of, naam, the best of the women in her time. Sayyidat Quraysh at Tahira. Innaha Sayyidat Nisa al Alameen fi zamaniha. She's the best of the women in her time. In her time, she was the best of the women. In fact, she was the first woman to become Muslim. That is, uh, enough fadl for her that she is the best of the women. Khadija to bint Khawailid. And these reminders we need, wallah, because we have daughters and we have sisters and we have mothers. And we need to remind the women as well that they have role models and that they are the best of the, the people. Yani of the, of the women. Uh, Naam. She is Khadija to bint Khawailid. Ibn Asad. Ibn Abdul Uzza, Ibn Kilab, Al Qurashiya, Al Asadiya, Al Mulakaba, Bit Tahira. She's given the, the title Al Tahira, the pure one. Sayyidat Quraysh, and she is also Sayyidat Quraysh. And that uh, Tahira that is in Al Isaba, 
في معرفة الصحابة as mentioned there يعني by ابن حجر ولدت في بيت مجد she was born in a good household in a household uh, which was generally a household of goodness of virtue of sharaf of honor and she was born before the year of the elephant by 15 years the Prophet married her when she was 40 years old and she was from the best of the the women and no doubt Naam she was married before that she mentions that she was married before that Naam the, and uh, she was married twice before that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the, the second one didn't work out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Naam exchanged her previous uh, uh, husband with the best of the people the best of Ibn Adam and that is the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ثم تقدم لها بعد ذلك he says here many people wanted to marry her because she was known to come from a good family and she was an honorable lady and not only that mashallah tabarakallah Allah has raised her as well to have yani to be generous to be kind to be kind and help, help in helping the poor and needy because she was blessed with some wealth that she used in order to help those who were in need, yani in need. And she showed that, inshallah, we'll mention some of the points that she, men she mentioned. We'll, we'll see how she herself na'am recognized that in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa She recognized that he was al-ameen, the trustworthy one. And since she was dealing with business and uh, uh, يعني, with buying and selling, she used to have men that she used to يعني, uh, hire to do her business of buying and selling. And subhanallah, when she heard about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa being truthful and being honorable, and being righteous, then she came to the Messenger Sallallahu herself and she mentioned some words to him. And these are mentioned in Ali Isaba as well. And uh, we'll mention what she says. It is mentioned in that in that seerah and that biography that Khadija radiallahu anha, after she found out about the Messenger of Allah, that he was honorable, she said, she was thinking, why doesn't she, after she was uh, approached by Naam her uh, a servant, a female servant of hers, said to her, why don't you yani, go forward to marry the Messenger of Allah? So, in that time he was not the Messenger of Allah, he was known just as a, 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 as a righteous man and an honest man, because after she married him, then he was, yani, then he received prophethood and messengership thereafter. So, she took it upon herself. ذُكْرَ أَنْهَا قَالَتْ يَا محمد مَا يَمْنَعُكَ أَنْ تتزوج. She said to him, Oh Muhammad, why don't you get married? What is holding you from getting married? فَقَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ مَا فِي يَدِي شَيْءٍ I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Rasulullah was نعم, humble. And he was poor. Didn't have much. ما فِي يَدِي شَيْءٍ And this is an advice to all the people as well. All the young youth. That those who are able to marry, marry. But those who are not, then let them fast. The Prophet said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'a, fali tazawwaj. Wa in lam yastati' If he's not able to get married, fali yasum. Then let him fast. Because why? It extinguishes desires. So therefore, this was what he said. I don't have yani, the ability, don't have much to get married. Qalat. فَإِنْ كُفِيتَ وَدُعِيتَ إِلَى الْمَالِ وَالْجَمَالِ وَالشَّرَفِ How about if you are sufficed? يعني such, sufficed with wealth and honor and beauty because a, a woman is married for three things. She's married for her deen, her akhlaq. She's married for her wealth and she's married for her status. She's married for her... And which is the best of them? فَدْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ فَدْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ Choose that which is yani, in her deen first. Choose that. When you go and you want to look for a hand in marriage, then look for that which is deen first. Because wealth can come and go. Beauty will go. But what will stay with the woman is her akhlaq, is her deen. Fadfar bita dati deen. And how many times we hear brothers, they get married, they go to another country and they get married to somebody just because of her beauty and she's not upon akhlaq. And they go astray, and he, she's astray, and she leads him astray. And we found that in the past as well. 
How many people went astray, became Ibn Kharaji or whatever group that they followed because of women? Because awal fitna to Bani Israel and Nisa, fitna to Nisa. So you find a person may lose his deen because of woman or wealth. And how many times we see that? The woman can be your Jannah or Nar. In me meaning that she can help you to get to Jannah or she can mislead you to get to a Nar. So you get certain women who are dunya women. Yani, all they want to do is go shopping. All they want to do is occupy you away from the dhikr of Allah. Not to help you remember Allah. Not to help you keep up your ibadah, your salawat. The righteous woman is he, is she who get, wakes you up in the in for fajr, and before that for tahajjud. The righteous woman is she reminds you of the dhikr of Allah. Naam. So here, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, "Who, who do you mean?" When she approached him, uh, 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 mentioned that you know why don't you get married to somebody who has wealth, beauty, and honor? He said, "Who do you mean?" She said, "Qalat ala al -fawr. She said, Khadija bint Khawailat. Fa'ajab. And he married her. Fantalaqt. But how did the marriage happen? He mentioned that they got, the, of course, the uncles and the family involved and so on. Fantalaqtu. Fantalaqat nafisa. Litazif al bushra ila Khadija. So he, actually, it was, sorry, the servant who actually uh, mentioned Khadija. It wasn't Khadija herself going forward to her, but it was the servant. Wa akhbara sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'mamah biraghbati. Then he وسلم, mentioned to his uncles that, yes, he wanted to marry Khadija. And uh, prior to that, she already knew of his, uh, of his uh, honesty. And she already knew of his yani, good character. And, she, and, he, and they got married. And she became the wife of the Messenger of Allah. Because thereafter it was known from Rasulullah to go to Cave, the Hira cave, and he would stay there for a month at a time. At a time, and so one time he came back, trembling. He came back after receiving prophethood. Iqra, bismi rabbika ladi khalaq khalaq al insana min alaq. He started repeating that with Jibril alayhi salatu salam, and he came down from the from Ghar Hira. He came down to Khadija radiallahu anha trembling, and. He wrapped himself up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that. And we will come to that. Because the one who is wrapped up is the one referring to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya al qum O one who is wrapped up, arise, stand, and warn. Warn the people away from shirk. And tell them about tawheed. Tell them about how to worship Allah correctly. And that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves to be worshipped alone. So, he came back. Look how Khadija radiallahu anha she comforted him. She comforted him after he came back being afraid. And he said, Zamiluni, Zamiluni, Dathiruni, Dathiruni, cover me, cover me. And then when she, clarif when she clarified what happened, yani when she found out what happened exactly to him, <coughs> she found out exactly what happened. He said to her, Ya Khadija, Laqad khashitu ala nafsi. Oh Khadija, radiallahu anha, I feared for myself. Qalat, look how these beautiful words are. Showing you her kindness, her generosity, and her uh, correct understanding of the deen of Allah. And showing also the righteous woman how she should be in making her husband firm upon the truth. And he was firm already. But look how she comforted him. She said, Wallahi. La yukhzik Allah. She said, by Allah, Allah will not leave you. Allah will not leave you, yani, to be humiliated or to be made lowly. La yukhzik Allah. Inna kala tasilu rahim Because you, yourself, you hold, keep ties of kinship. And this is important. Keeping ties of kinship with children, with your brothers, with your sisters. Naam, of course your parents before that keeping ties of kinship. Man wasalaha, wasalahu Allah. Wa man qata'aha, qata'ahu Allah. Whoever joins it, connects it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also 
uh, 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 sends mercy to him and whoever cuts it off then he is cut off from mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Sirat al-Rahim is important Naam wa tasdaq al-Hadith and you speak the truth you're not a person uh, who doesn't speak the truth you're always speaking the truth he's al-Ameen he's al-Ameen وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونَ he's not possessed he's al-Ameen Allah says نون وَالْقَلَمِ وَمَا يَسْتُرُونَ مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَا أَجْرًا غَيْرًا مَمْنُونَ وَإِنَّ كَلَ عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ He's upon a great status, a great manner, great akhlaq. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ لَا أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهُ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, there's a beautiful example. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِدْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفَ الرَّحِيمِ Indeed, a messenger has come from amongst yourselves. He's a human being. From you. From you. He's a human being. It grieves him that you turn away from the sunnah, from the commandments of Allah. حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ He's so concerned for you. بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوفَ الرَّحِيمِ With the believers he is. Ra'uf, he's kind and he's rahim, he's merciful with the believers. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's human, guided to light, guided to guidance, guided to truth, guided to tawheed, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Not as the Brelvis say, that he is not human. That he is not even human. Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ They say, in their translation, using Ahmad Riza Brelvich uh, Urdu Tafsir, they say, I am perceivingly, in brackets, a human being. And not really, perceivingly. Just, it looks low. It looks like it. It looks so. And Tahir Qadri, the Sufi Brelvi, he said in his translation of the Quran, May Allah guide us and guide, and guide him to the truth. What does he say? He says, it, it, it seems, he says, uh, it looks like only. It looks like only that he is human. It looks like, not really. So look how they change the Quran with their interpretation, with their own false understanding. And they try to claim that he has no shadow, he has no footprints, and so on, with fabricated narrations. So he, the Prophet speaks the truth, and this is for us as well. وَقُولُ قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا And say a word that is truth, that is directed to the truth. وَكُونُ مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ And be with the truthful ones. وَتَحْمِلُ الْكَلُ وَتُقْرِي الضَّيْفِ وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَائِبَ الْحَقِّ And also you help the needy, the one who's in trouble, the one who needs some help, and also, you are good to your guest. Naam. The one who asks of your help, don't push him away. Help them. وَأَمَّا السَّائِلَ فَلَا تَنْهَرْ The one who asks of you, don't push, don't, لَا تَنْهَرْهُ don't, don't rebuke him, insult him, do bad things to, you need to make him feel bad. Doesn't have much. He's in need, he's in it. Say a good word. If you're not able to help, say a good word. Don't repel them and, and, and make them feel bad. If they're in need. And you are good to your guest. No doubt. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Fal yukrim daifah. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, let him be good to his guest. Wati'inu ala nawaib al haq And you help. Of those people seeking truth, seeking their rights, you help them get their rights. So, look at how intelligent and how, how beautiful her understanding was. And how righteous she was that she said she recognized these things from the messenger sallam, and she said to him Allah will not leave you because you do all of these good deeds and that narration is in Bukhari in the beginning of the book of Revelation in the first chapter and subhanallah the heart of the messenger sallam, was comforted by those beautiful words and likewise yani, it was comforted through her trusting in him and believing in him and aiding him and she did not suffice herself with that rather she spoke to her cousin Ibn Nawfal Naam ila Ibn Ammiha Warqat Ibn Nawfal and she told him what had happened and her cousin realized and he hoped that he would live to see that time that period of the messenger of Allah وسلم, and he realized that he no doubt was a messenger of Allah because it was mentioned in previous scriptures that 
a messenger will come yani in that period and also um, amidst uh, palm trees so Khadija radiallahu anha she was the first to become Muslim and she was the first to aid the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and she and she did her best in order to comfort him and help him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhal muddathir, qum fa'anzir, wa rabbaka fa'kabbir. This is, as in the tafsir, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa'anzir min al-shirk. Fa'anzir al-nas, an al-shirk. Warn the people away from shirk. Wa rabbaka fa'kabbir. This shows you tawheed. So first of all, you have to, as Shaykh Nuhdaymi rahmullah mentioned, you have to take out empty shirk. And then put in Tawheed. Take out deficiency, then put in perfection. Yani, take out that which is considered to be shirk. And warn against shirk. And to complete it, call the people to Tawheed. And this is clearly showing you the most evil of actions. Because if there was anything else that was evil or more evil, Allah would have mentioned that. But here, he said, فَأَنذِرْ Warn the people. And in the tafsir, Warn the people from shirk. And no doubt, from all the other types of misguidance. وَرَبَّكَ فَكَبِّرْ And your Lord فَكَبِّرْ Glorify and exalt. Because He is the one who deserves to be worshipped alone. He is the one who created you. الَّذِي خَلَقَكْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ He created you and those before you that you may gain taqwa. You may be pious. So, وَالثِّيَابَكَ فَطَهِّرْ And also, your thiyab, your clothes, Purify or, or clean. And idols. Yani, be free from them and be far away from these idols. So these are the, 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 the first verses yani, showing, you, uh, showing you that he clearly is a messenger of Allah. He is clearly a messenger of Allah. This is how the Mashaykh explained it. Those verses refer to his messengership. And as for him... Yani, uh, uh, reciting behind Jibreel alayhi salam that considered to be prophethood. So he was a prophet and a messenger. Because here, a messenger means what? To proclaim to the people. And these verses show you that he has to go out and proclaim to the people. And warn and guide. So Khadija radiallahu anha, she was righteous and she did her best to help the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Kanat Khadija radiallahu anha bihaqqi zawja Al Hakima, she was wise. And she used to look at the affairs and imagine them in the best of ways. That which will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is why the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Khairu Nisa'iha Maryam, meaning the sa of Jannah. The best of the, the the women of paradise are, he said, Maryam bint Imran. Wa khair nisa'iha Khadija to bint Khawailid. You mentioned those two, two women being the best of the women of paradise. Hadith reported in Bukhari. Fadail ashab al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as for Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha to bint Abi Bakr as Siddiq. The one who is free from any blame. Who has been freed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of any, any, uh, uh, anything yani, that would insult her character. For indeed... She is the teacher of even men. She was the educator of even men. She, meaning that she would, yani with her fatawa, she, she guided many people, yani from her uh, family members, those who were close to her, from her family members who later on also yani, uh, uh, guided others. It doesn't mean that she's in front of men teaching. Naam, this is not what is meant. But rather, uh, uh, yani those family members from a maharim, she used to, uh, benefit and they used to benefit others. So here in Bukhari and Muslim, Sa'al al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ayyun Nas, Ahabu Ilayka Ya Rasulullah. This is after the death of, of Khadija, Radiallahu Anna. And Khadija, when he was married to Khadija, he did not marry anyone else uh, with her, along with her. But after her death, Radiallahu Anna, he married Aisha, Radiallahu Anna, and he was asked, What is the the, the most uh, yani, beloved person to you, 
ayyun nas ahabu ilayka ya Rasulullah. He said Aisha. Aisha bint Abi Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Qala famin al-rijal. What about from the men? This is Mukhari al-Muslim. He said Abuha. The father. The father Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. From the men. The best of the the best of the the men and most beloved to me secondly Aisha radiallahu anha no doubt she grew in a humble house a house of knowledge her father Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anha the best of the of the companions the best of the the the, 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 the sahaba radiallahu anhum wa fi bayt al-mutawadi' Aisha began to learn also yani from the, the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam directly Ah, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So under his shade or under his wings, if you like, she took the, the knowledge and the affairs of yani, the household, that which is within the house. That's why the, the scholars say, if you yani, the affairs within the house, then the, 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 the wives of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew more about that than anyone else. The affairs of the household. In the zawj, huwa amalul mar al awwal. Naam. وإن من أكبر غايات المرأة في هذه الحياة في هذه الحياة أن تكون زوجة. This is the best, the best duty that a woman can uh, be. The best job, the best duty that she can be is to be a wife and a mother. وأن تكون أما. Nowadays, with all these liberated, supposedly these liberated women who go out to work nine to five, and sometimes you see, يعني they are, they are uh, 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 dr yani, uh, uh, driving car, uh, buses, not just cars, lorries and buses, and they think this is liberation. SubhanAllah. The best liberation for the woman is to be a mother and, uh, and a wife. It's the best thing for her. The best thing for her to bring up and rear, rear her children and to breastfeed for two years. Naam. And to look after, give the children the best education for them. Teaching them, making sure that they learn Quran. Making sure that they are memorizing the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Making sure that they can grow up into a good household. This is not this what we aspire our new generation to be like. So choose the woman who is upon that. Not the woman who is a career woman. Who wants Naam only to be out of the house. Only to be out of the house mixing with the men. This is not the woman that we aspire. We aspire that, that woman who is upon... The way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. And they are the best of the women. And they are the best of the women who resemble and want to be yani, bringing the new society or the new generation upon the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No doubt. To be a mother. And it's great in the sight of Allah to be a righteous mom for her children. And likewise, a righteous wife. لا يغنيها في ذلك شيء ولو حازت مالا يملأ الأرض then she's not turned away from anything else. Even if, there, if wealth was put forward to her as much as, as the earth, to turn away from being a mother, to turn away from being a wife, a righteous wife. That is not something that she aspires, yani she, that she turns away for money and wealth. So even if she were يعني, to gain knowledge of the dunya, whatever she, level she gains, or she reaches a status as high as يعني, the, 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 uh, the clouds, that's not what a Muslim woman who's righteous aspires for, that she's a dunya woman. No, but rather she aspires for to be like the best of the, of the companionesses, the likes of Khadija radiallahu anha. And the likes of Aisha radiallahu anha. And Aisha radiallahu anha was a alima. She was knowledgeable. This encouraged the Muslim woman also to learn her deen. And to study. And to increase in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Of learning and yani, teaching. And this is why the Prophet himself would supplicate to Allah. And he would say, Allahumma ja'alni min al muttaqina imama. Oh Allah, make me amongst the muttaqin a leader. An imam. So I asked Shaykh Ubaid Havidullah, what we know is that we don't seek to be leaders in communities and we don't seek to be يعني, above the people and 
But what does this mean then? And he said, what it means is that first and foremost you are a leader for your family. That you are a leader for your children. That you are a leader and example here it means. As example for your children and your wife. For the men. And likewise for the women. Allahumma ja'alna minal mutaqeena imama. For them to be examples for their daughters. To be examples for their children. No doubt, bringing them up upon that which Allah loves. وعن تميم بن سلمة عن عروة قال لقد رأيت عائشة رضي عن تقسم سبعين ألفا وإنها لا ترفع جيب درعا درعها and تميم بن سلمة he saw عائشة رضي عنها يعني giving charity so much charity giving it out to the people that is a narration mentioned in حلية الأولياء but there's no checking for that so hold on to that until we know it's authentic but in in general no doubt she was generous. And she was kind to those who uh, uh, sought help. قال الإمام الزهري رحمه الله لو جمع علم عائشة أو لو جمع علم عائشة إلى علم جميع النساء لكان علم عائشة لكان علم عائشة أفضل. If all the knowledge of the women were gathered together, then the knowledge of Aisha will be best. Best. رضي الله عنها. Naam, and that's in Bidaya, when Nihaya, and also in Isaba, and Sir Alam Nubala. So here, Aisha radiallahu anha, gaining much knowledge from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And also, she used to uh, try to be friends and try to come close to anyone else. Yani from the women who had a hadith from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was concerned that she will gain knowledge of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's narrations, and that's why... Uh, the poet said regarding the 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 ones who are mukthirun from them he mentioned Aisha wal mukthirun fi riwayat al athar Abu Huraira wa yalihi ibn Umar these are from the ones who narrated the most and ibn Umar no doubt radiyallahu anh anhuma and from them is wa at the end he said wa Aisha tu zawja tu nabi and Aisha also is from the ones who, from the five who narrated the most and Aisha was the only woman amongst them, subhanahu radiallahu anha, showing you that she reached that level of narrating thousands of hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, having memorized and having narrated. And she, inshallah, comes under that hadith. May Allah brighten the face of the person who memorized. Naam, who heard the hadith, he contained it, he memorized it, and he understood it. And he proclaimed it just as he heard it. Subhanallah. And just as he heard it, exactly, then he proclaimed. May Allah brighten the face of that person. No doubt Aisha radiallahu anha was from those who used to memorize and understand well. And they would ask her, companions would ask, from behind the hijab, they would ask when an issue they needed to find out about, they would ask Aisha radiallahu anha. Aisha radiallahu anha, she was... She was also slandered. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed her innocence. He revealed her innocence. And that was in a long hadith. Naam, because what happened was the Prophet ﷺ, as he's giving da'wah, he's calling the people to tawheed, many people becoming jealous of him. And they have hatred for him. And so they want to harm him. So, and one of them who wanted to harm him is Abdullah ibn Abi. Abdullah ibn Abi ibn Salul. Because he was a hypocrite, he had jealousy in his heart and he wanted to harm the Messenger Wasallam. From the time he heard the Messenger Wasallam called to Islam, called to this truth, to Tawheed and Sunnah, he wanted to harm him. And what opportunity he could get, he would use. And that if that slander, it occurred. The, the slander occurred in a time when the Prophet went out on an expedition and Aisha radiallahu anha, because she was light, and she was on top of a riding beast, yani on a, uh, uh, one of those carriages. And uh, the Prophet didn't realize that she was left behind. And when the expedition le left, then behind was Aisha radiallahu anha, left behind with one of the companions. And that was for a period of one month. He says here, Imtaddat ila shahr min al zaman, hatta nazal al Quran. Meaning the, the, the ifk. The ifk was for a period of one month before her innocence was revealed. But the journey wasn't one month. The journey, as they were coming back to 
uh, Medina, then one of the companions who was left behind, وتحمل هذه البراءة شهادة مباركة للصحابي الجليل صفوان بن معطل الذي رمي بالحديث الآثم كما وسمة المنافقين بميسم الزور والبهتان. So here anyway, let me just read you the story from the beginning. وها هي عائشة رضي الله عنها. She she actually narrates the story herself. She says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أراد سفرا when the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted a journey, wanted to go on a journey, he would draw lots between his wives and see which of his wives is going to come with him. In this case, she says, then in this particular expedition, I, my name came out as being from the one who's going to travel with him. And that was the time after the, the obligation of hijab was sent down. The obligation of hijab was sent down. And I was put in a carriage on top of a riding beast. No. So he said we, she said we went... On this expedition, and Qadr Allah ma sha'a fa'al, yani she was left behind. I'll just go because she says I was uh, uh, very, uh, I'm not, I wasn't heavy in weight, meaning she was light. Naam. Then she says, and behind, who was left? Wakana Safwan ibn Ma'attal, as Sulami, or Silmi, he was left behind. And Fa'asbaha Manzili, then she says, so she, he, uh, Safwan, he realized that there was someone also left behind in the in the uh, compartment on top of the uh, riding beast, and he recognized that it was her because, yani, before the hijab was sent down, he knew her, yani, he recognized her. So he says, "Wakana yurani qabla al hijab, fastarja." First, and she said, "He never spoke to me once in that whole journey." Look at the adab that the Sahabi Safwan anhu had. So she said, I covered myself, I covered my, uh, I, put the, uh, I put the khimar on, the covering on, yani over my head, and wallahi ma kallamani, by Allah he didn't speak to me at all. Kalima, not even one word. Wala samiatu minhu kalima ghair istirja'i. He never heard, she never heard even one statement from him as well. So he continued to take her back home. فَقَدِمْنَا الْمَدِينَةِ And after that, Abdullah, uh, uh, this uh, uh, hypocrite, he started mentioning the slander. Abdullah ibn Abi ibn Salul, he started mentioning the slander. فَقَدِمْتُ الْمَدِينَةِ فَاشْتَكَيْتُ شَهْرًا One month, Aisha Radan was patient and she was yani, perseverant regarding this, this uh, uh, yani, slander. وَالنَّاسُ يُفِيضُونَ فِي فِي قَوْلِ أَهْلِ الْإِفْكِ And people are spreading this uh, قَوْلِ Spreading this slander amongst themselves And she asked Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, to go home to her parents To go home to her parents Because the, uh, even the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Before he would call her by her name And then after that يعني, When the people were spreading this slander He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used another name And he didn't address her as he used to address her because of he was wanted to ask what happened exactly what was the situation so Aisha when she uh, 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 and because the messenger Sallallahu did not the revelation did not come down yet to show the innocence of Aisha anha. so she says then after that she went back to her home and the Prophet came in فَسَلَّمَ ثُمَّ قَالَ كيف تيكم؟ فقلت أتأذن لي أن آتي أبوي. Then she asked. That's when she actually arrived. She said, "Can I go back to my parents?" وأنا حين إدين أريد أن استيقن الخبر من قبلهما. Because she wants to know the story, what is going on, what is being said from them. يعني from both of them, from his from her parents, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq and her mother. ف فأذن لي. She said. So give me permission to go. فجئت أبوي. فقلت يا أمتا يا أمتا Ma yatahadathu nas. What are the people speaking about? What are the people saying? Yani in terms of their lies and their slanders about me. Because she knows she's innocent and she was innocent. And when they told her, she said, Subhanallah. She said, Subhanallah. Wa qad nas bihada. The people are speaking about this. Fabakaitu layla. So that night she cried. And she cried because she knew it was a lie. And she said, the, 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 uh, the uh, tears didn't stop 
falling. Yani she kept on crying because the people had lied about her and stunted her with the with the most yani worst of things or baddest of things and yani the worst of things. And she woke up crying. So the Prophet ﷺ, he called Osama bin Zayd and he called Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. He asked Osama bin Zayd about her. And Osama bin Zayd only mentioned good things about Aisha radiallahu anha. Showing her, showing the Messenger وسلم, that she is innocent. And showing the Messenger وسلم, that not to worry that she is a person that is known only for good. So after that, when the slander kept on uh, uh, increasing, the Prophet وسلم, got on a minbar. No. He went on a minbar and he said, "Man yadurni min rajul qad balagani adah fi ahli, fa wallahi ma alimtu ala ahli illa khaira. Wa laqad dakaru rajulan ma alimtu alayhi illa khaira, wa ma kana yadkhulu ala ahli illa ma'i." So here he meant he said, "I have known only from my family except good, but so who will relieve me from a man who is speaking ill about my family?" about my wife, about Aisha radiallahu anha, who would relieve me from this slander, from this individual, and I've known from her father except good, except, and I would not go uh, into any place except that her father is with me. So <coughs> Sa'ad Mu'ad got up and said, Ya Rasulullah, I will relieve you from him, I will relieve you from him, yani, sort him out. In kana min al aus darabtu unuqa, he said, if he's from the aus tribe, uh, I will basically relieve you from him. So the Prophet ﷺ waited until the bara'a came when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna alladina ja'u bil if usbatum minkum la tahsabuhu sharran lakum bal huwa khairun lakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those who came with the if, with the slander, in order to harm you, don't think that it's a bad thing for you, rather it is actually victory for you. Likulli mri'in minhum maktasab min al ithm, because every one of them who entered that slander, they will have a share of their sin. And those who yani, took the severest of that slander against Aisha anha, and did much harm to the Messenger وسلم, and to Aisha anha, for them is a grievous punish, punishment. Naam. لولا لولا إذ سمعتموه ظن المؤمنون والمؤمنات بأنفسهم خيرا وقالوا هذا إفكم مبين. The believers, male and female, when they heard that slander, they knew exactly that it was indeed a lie and it was indeed a slander, because they knew Aisha رضي الله عنها how great she was as a Sahabiya and how. نعم. Going to do adhan. طيب. I will just finish now. Before you do Adhan, I will round up and say that the Prophet ﷺ, after the, the revelation was revealed regarding her slander, then Aisha could only remember the, the verse from Surat Yusuf, فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِيفُونَ She knew that, she remembered the verse and she considered herself, of course she was yani, uh, slandered and oppressed and Alhamdulillah, Allah Subhanahu revealed her innocence. And the Prophet mentioned about Aisha. He said, Ya Aisha, one time when Jibreel came to give him, give her, give him revelation, he said, Ya Aisha, hada Jibreel, wa huwa yakra, yakra'u alayki salam. This is Jibreel and he's giving salam to you. And so she said, Wa alayhi salam, wa rahmatullah, tara ma la nara, ya Rasulullah. You see that which we don't see, O Messenger of Allah. Aisha radhi anha, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, uh, uh, he loved her and he used to say that, she is like the, that tarid, that dish, amongst the rest of the food. Yani, in terms of yani, her righteousness and, the, and being the best of the women of her time, that she is like the tarid, that dish, which is most beloved, most tasty, most liked by the people. She is like that dish compared to the rest of uh, the food. So he loved her and she was righteous. Alhamdulillah, she was from the most knowledgeable amongst the women. In fact, the knowledgeable woman in her time. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He blesses our children, our daughters, and our sisters, and our mothers, and our wives, that they follow the example of the Sahabiyat, from the likes of Aisha radiallahu anha, and before her, Khadija radiallahu anha, in their good manners, and in their good, uh, uh, in their, in their, in their good way, uh, no doubt, for they are the chosen ones, 
from this Ummah and we need to learn about their, their biographies, we need to learn about who they are such that we can follow them as examples. Naam, both men and women, they can follow them as examples. Wallahu a'lam wa sallam ala khayri khalqil Muhammad wa akhi da'am alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. And this is, uh, this question, it looks so long that we might have to, we'll have to leave it. And I have to go, we have to be in Slough. We have a dars after Isha, inshaAllah. Zakhmanu khairan, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala.